in the previous video, we started this problem. We've walked through the whole idea behind it, the physics, what's going on, and we solved it using one of the ways that we could have done, one of the paths we could have taken, okay? Now, for the second video, we're doing the same thing. I have the same scribbles down here, but instead of using the tangent like we did before, we're going to only rely on the four um, equations that we set up beforehand, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to solve straight for D, okay? So straight for the uh, unknown D that we're looking for. And, and to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to copy the equations that we're going to be using and paste them here. Right. So remember, we're after D, right? That's our objective is to find D. So D, if I relate the cosine equation and this equation here, so equation one and four together, I can come up with um, D times the cosine of five has to be equal to v of x t, and therefore t has to be equal to d cosine of 5 divided by v of x, right? And on equation 2, which is going to be like the main equation that I'll be using for these things, equation 2, I'm going to be subbing in everything else. Um, we don't want to do anything else with this. Now, I'll just go ahead and do this. Okay, so this is going to be my main equation. I'm going to use equation two from now on. Okay, so where I have v, uh, where I have t, I'll be subbing in this, and where I have v o y, I can sub in. Sorry, when I have, um, I'll just do that for now. Just sub in t. Okay, so this is going to give me negative h equals v o y d cosine of five divided by v o x minus g over 2, t cosine of 5, divided by v of x, squared. All right, so I can rearrange this, because after all, I want to solve for d, right? So I can rearrange this in a couple different ways. I'll send d to one side, divide everything by d, so let's do it in steps so we don't get lost. And the other thing that we can do is, wherever we have h, whenever h shows up, in this case we have h on here on this left-hand side, we can sub that h in for uh, d times sine of 5, right? Where is it? Here. Blue. Okay, so where we have h on the left hand side, you can sub that by d sine of 5. So this becomes negative d sine of 5 equals, you might just want to copy paste this. Okay. Next, what are we doing next? We're going to be um, trying to solve for D, right? So I need to put D all on one side because I want you guys to look carefully at the following. Um, sine of 5, we know. V O Y, we know. V O X, we know. Cosine of 5, we know. Gravity, we know. 2, we know. Cosine of 5, we know. V O X, we know. So all the th only unknown in this equation, the whole equation here, is actually D. So as long as I can solve for D, I can grab the value that I'm after. Okay, so you could go straight into this. And this is probably your, I don't know, your go-to situation if you're trying to, to solve this without much thinking, without using the tangent um, idea. And you can do it, but you just see it's a bit more messy. So let me go ahead and just solve it with some algebra. So therefore, d squared, just taking the d out of the parentheses there, plus line of 5, u of x squared has to be equal to d. Cosine of 4, divided by u of x, plus 2 times d sine of 5. And at this point here, now we can divide everything by d, okay? Because you see that we have uh, d over here, and we have d squared over here, and d over here. So if we divide the whole thing by d, we're going to be getting rid of those d's on the right-hand side and only leaving one d on the left-hand side. Now, dividing by d is 
um, much simpler, I'd say, than dividing by time because we know for sure that, right, everything by D, and we know for sure that D is different than zero, right? We know that because D is a measurement, it's a distance, so therefore we know it, has, it cannot be zero. So this is, mathematically, it makes a bit more sense. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Well, we're going to get rid of all of these, right? So we're going to get rid of this D, this D, and this D when we divide everything by D. Um, and then we can actually solve for these. Remember I said we have everything, so we have this value, have this value, so have this value, this, 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 and this. So we can solve for those. I'll solve for those. So here, just leave these as unknown on the left-hand side. Sine V O X squared. So this is the same, but then if I solve for this bit here, okay, so if I solve for that part right there, I'm going to be 0 0.047. Not and solving for this bit here, I get not point not one seven eight. So therefore, d is, and I can solve now for the last part that I didn't solve yet. So d and this comes this guy here is not point not 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 four eight three. Okay, let me sum those guys up. Get not point eleven twenty five. So therefore, D is just the division between the two things, which is 232.7 meters like we had before. So all good. Okay, so what's the difference between this method and the previous one? Well, know that physically, the equations we're using are exactly the same we came up with before, right? That's not going to change. The difference now is that instead of relying on the tangent so that I can eliminate uh, one of the unknowns from our equation, which was precisely uh, D, and then finding the time with, that's time finding D, I skip that step which led me to go straight into finding D, but it's messier in terms of algebra. So whether you like it or not, then it's up to you. But this is a different way of doing it. Okay, I'll do it. I'll show you a third way, which is not precisely a way of solving it as much as it as is a way of checking that you, what you did is correct. Okay, so it should be the shortest video of the three.